So true life is the life of the heart. In this worldly existence, we can embrace it through the sunnah of the Messenger Now, the Prophet uh, himself confirmed this fact that we already saw in Surah Al-Najm that uh, he does not speak of his own desire. In fact, it is but revelation that is revealed that. And he himself, what did he say about this? He said in this record in, the, um, in Abu Dawood, and uh, it's not, it's, uh, transmission is correct, it's Sahih. He said, which means, indeed, I was given the book and the like of it with it. And the like of it along with it, yani, the sunnah. His own sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa was something that he was given just like he was given the Quran and it was revealed unto him and it is inspiration and wahi. In the same way, the uh, sunnah of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa his ahadith, everything that he approved, his sayings, this is also wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, let's talk a little bit about our, now we know all these things, let's talk about our negligence towards uh, the Messenger Wasallam. What is our uh, response to all of this uh, knowledge? It's not enough just to understand all that we've just understood in terms of the importance of the Sunnah and its application. It cannot translate into action until we have one very crucial uh, component. There has, there's one crucial element if that is not present, there will never be implementation of the sunnah. This uh, knowledge will never translate into action. And uh, in order to uh, walk the walk, this crucial element is unconditional love for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is he really, we have to ask ourselves, all of us has to uh, question, is he really dearer to me than my wealth? Is he really dearer to me than my children? Then my own self, it's a very high standard of love that is required of us when it comes to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because Allah Himself said, it's very hard to love anyone uh, more than yourself. Very difficult to do that. This is why it is, uh, no one loves uh, another human being more than a mother loves her child. But even for her, in spite of that love, it's difficult to get up at night. Why? Because I don't love anyone more than I love myself. And I want to sleep and I want to rest. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is urging us to rise above our uh, the, the desires of ourself and to love the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi even more than we love ourselves. And we see this in the Quran. In Surah Al-Hazab, verse number 6, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم النبي أولى بالمؤمنين من أنفسهم That the, the Messenger, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is أولى, يعني he has more priority uh, over, he has more right over the believers than they have over themselves. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu has a greater right in you and me than I have over myself or you have over yourself. SubhanAllah, this is an incredibly high uh, standard of love and devotion that is required from us as believers to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he himself confirmed it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In a uh, hadith which is reported uh, by Anas bin Malik radiallahu anh in uh, Sahih Muslim, that, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين. Which means that none of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than his son, than his father, and all of human humanity, all of mankind. يعني the the, the closest relations that you can possibly think of and that they are the, they are the dearest to you. My love has to be more in your heart than their love. What I find personally is that we. Uh, as, as Muslims are very negligent in cultivating our love for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to this great level. Um, when you have never met someone, it's very hard to love them in, this, in the way that the Sahaba loved him. How, so what does that mean? It doesn't of course mean that it's not possible because Allah would require from us something that's not possible, right? Because he says, that he does not bear a burden uh, upon a soul more than it can bear. So, he did not place a burden more than a soul can bear. So this means that we have to start early in our cultivation uh, of the love of the Master Sallallahu in our hearts. We have to start with our children and we have to uh, try to work upon ourselves as much as we can. Now, like I said, we never met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We never saw the way that the Sahaba loved him, the way that the Sahaba honored him. We really need to glimpse at those beautiful scenes and uh, stories and in order to uh, appreciate the depth of their love. And at the same time, 
there's a very profound reality that I think will help us to cultivate this love for the Prophet and it's a reality that we, uh, when you hear it, you'll know it's true, but you may not have consciously ever thought about it before. It may have never have crossed your minds before, but once I tell you, you'll instinctively accept it as, of course, it had to be true. And this reality is that the sanctity and honor of the Prophet after his death is the same as it was during his lifetime. His sanctity and honor is just as equally valid and standing after his death, after he has passed, وسلم, as it was during his lifetime. And you have uh, the great Faqir al-Qadi Ayad, he said, know that the sanctity and honor of the Prophet وسلم, after his death is the same as during his life. And that is when his hadith, his seerah, his name, and his sunnah are mentioned. And yani we're supposed to uh, muster up the same type of honor and respect as if he were present. But all of these things of uh, his are mentioned. Now, how can you possibly follow and love someone if you don't honor his words? Obviously, it's not possible. And this uh, honoring of his words continues, of course, after his life and applies completely and totally to us. And we look at this command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the Quran about honoring the Prophet. So Allah said, if you look at Surah Al Fatih verses eight to nine, Inna arsalnaka shahida wa mubashira wa nadira, li tu'minu billahi wa rasulihi wa tu'azziruhu wa tuwaqiruhu wa tusabihuhu bukrata wa asila. Which means, verily we have sent you as a witness, as a bearer of glad tidings and as a warner in order that you Yani, uh, all mankind may believe in his messenger and that you assist him and that you honor him and that you glorify Allah's praises morning and afternoon. So not only is it love of the messenger وسلم, that is obligatory but also to honor him in this manner is also something that Allah has required of the believers. And you see different dimensions of uh, respect for the messenger وسلم, as portrayed in the Quran. For example, if we turn to Surah Al-Hujurat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena, la tarafu amalu, la tarafu aswatakum fawqa sult al-nabi. Which means, all you who believe, do not raise your voices fawqa sult al-nabi above the voice of the messenger of Allah. So Allah alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And uh, believe it or not, subhanAllah, the uh, ulama, the scholars used to implement this uh, with their students in their gatherings of hadith. Imam al-Mahdi, he would order his students not to talk but to remain silent and respectful when the hadith of the Prophet was being narrated. And this uh, ayah from the Quran that I just recited to you from Surah Al-Hujra is only used as evidence for that. So as soon as we hear all Allah, all Qala Rasulullah, that Allah said, or His Messenger said, we should immediately become alerted. Our posture should ch change. Our attention should be completely directed to that. It shouldn't just pass by like uh, the words of other uh, men or uh, pass by over our ears. So this is part of the love, part of cultivating the love for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in our hearts is not to place our voices above His voice. Now how can we do that today? My voice is my opinion. This refers to none other than our very opinions, our personal preferences over His words. And uh, we can never have true iman. Do you know that a sign of true iman, a condition of completing one's iman, is complete submission to the words of the Prophet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says in Surah Al-Nisa, verse 65, this is one of the most decisive uh, verses in terms of submitting to the Messenger. So Allah It's such a clear uh, command. Which means that by uh, by your Lord, Allah Himself is swearing by Himself. They will not believe until they make you, yani the Messenger, Allah Sallam, a judge in that which falls into, they fall into dispute over, and then that they find in themselves no resistance about your decision, and they submit with a complete submission. So it's not just outwardly acceptance of the decision, saying yes, I accept this decision, or yes, this decision is correct. But then to look at the state of one's heart. How is this decision reacting, meshing with my heart? Is it a sinking into it uh, without resistance, or is there uh, something that wants to push away these words, or push away or change the meaning of this hadith? And we take Allah's refuge uh, from that. This is something we have to ask ourselves. 
What is clear from this verse, and this is what I want to share, Surah Nisa, verse 65, um, is that there is no complete iman until there is complete submission to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, because this is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, رَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ By your word, they do not believe until that condition of complete submission to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is fulfilled.